Yes, I believe we're here. Welcome everybody. Um, thank you for joining in on our first debut of our Inspired By series. I'm Sharon from Free Spirit. I work for Free Spirit. And um, we're excited that you're all here joining us. This is our first debut. So, you know, we're, you know, zooming it from home and uh, we're really excited about our guest today. Um, we have started here at Free Spirit. So we have started this new series. It's going to be inspired by, we're going to have guests uh, every Thursday at three o'clock PM Eastern Standard Time. So if you can join in, we'd love to have you join in. Uh, today, I would like to introduce uh, Annie Unrain from By Annie, and she is here to show us all, all, an awful lot of her bags and samples, and we're really excited to see what she has to show us. Um, Annie, if you'd like to say hello. Hello. I am so excited to be here. Thanks for inviting me. I can't wait to show you all the things we've made with Free Spirit Fabrics, or a small selection of the things we've made with Free Spirit Fabrics. Yes, we can't wait to see that. I know that you and your team have been working really hard and, uh, you know, creating all kinds of wonderful bags. Uh, Annie, I know I've, I met you a few years ago, about, oh, maybe it's been five years now <laughs> at Quilt Market. Right? And we've been working together since with the Free Spirit Fabrics and your bags and you and your team always do such a wonderful job, you know, coordinating and putting together all kinds of pieces in uh, showcasing uh, your patterns and our fabrics beautifully. So we thank you for that. So um, Annie's here, like I said, and she's going to do a trunk show. So that's the focus of today's um, Inspired By series. And she's gonna show us a bunch of patterns that she's, um, like, like I already mentioned, that her and her team have worked on. So Annie, if you would like to, I'll stop talking and you can be on screen. And uh, I just want to welcome everyone that's on. I'm glad that you've come. I'm just trying to see how many people I see a lot of hearts. So I know that we're being seen. So this is a great thing. I see people from Texas, Ohio, Texas, uh, Ridgeland. So there's people coming in from all over the place. Lauren, Lawrence, Kansas, it's Sammy. So we've got a lot of hearts coming in. And so we'll just keep going. We have 61 comments already. I can't see them all, but we have them. That's <laughs> fabulous. That yes. is so, fun, so much fun. Well, um, I when we talked about doing this, um, I said, I have got so many free spirit models because we absolutely love working with your fabrics. And so I kind of went through the list and there were, I mean, so many that there's no way we'd be doing a trunk show for the next week if I wanted to show them all. So you helped me kind of pare it down by saying, let's focus on fabrics that are in quilt shops now. So we're going to today be um, featuring uh, models that we've made using fabrics from Tula Pink's homemade line and her True Colors line. We're going to do some of Kate's collective from fall 2019. We're going to show some Kismet that Valerie Wells designed and some of uh, Tim Holtz's um, fabrics. I think the ones that we're showing are his eclectic elements, which may not be the newest, but um, very, very translatable there. So once I did that, I came up with about three dozen models and said, again, I need to pare this down. So I kind of organized them that I decided to focus on kind of four different things. I know that so many of us are stuck at home right now. And um, I don't know about you, but for a lot of quilters, I think it's probably kind of a little gift that we've been given that we've got this time to indulge in things that we love to do, like sewing. I mean, whoever thought someone would tell us you have to stay home and sew? Um, you know, it's not been a real hardship for a lot of us because we're able to stay busy. I know a lot of people are making masks and, and catching up on UFOs. But what I wanted today is give you some inspiration since you may not be able to get to your local fabric shop in person, but bring some things to show you that you can check with your local quilt shop to see if they can drop ship to you or, you know, have you meet them on the sidewalk and pass things off to you uh, to give you some ideas if you've caught up on all your UFOs and you're ready to start something new. So the first um, projects that I want to show you today are small things that make great gifts. 
to me, this is the perfect time to get ahead on my gift giving, uh, sewing. So, I mean, who thought that you'd have all your Christmas presents ready to go by April of this year? But I think that's very doable for a lot of us. So I've picked out just four different projects that would be great for gifts, uh, small things to do. And the first one that I want to show you is a pattern called uh, flipping out. And this is a great one. There's so many ways that you can use this. This pattern comes in two sizes. There's a small one and a large one. They both are designed so that they zip up to the top. So whatever is inside is safe and secure. They have a little tab on the top that helps you zip it open and also you can carry it with. And when you open it, they each open and can fold down so that you've got easy access to what's inside. So we made these using Tula Pink's homemade fabric. We used her Renaissance ribbons on the outside, but we think these are just perfect for carrying your sewing supplies and storing them when you go to class or just to have sitting on your sewing table to have things easy to access. If you're a knitter, you might enjoy the large size because it holds your knitting needles, yarn your current project in a nice easy to transport manner so that's one way that you can use this fun bag if you're looking for something to make as a gift for your grandkids they also work well for that so the large one is perfect for putting barbie dolls in so i'm sure a lot of you have grandkids who you're missing terribly, this is a fun way to make something special for them. Heck, you don't even have to wait for Christmas. Make it and send it to them now and let them have a place to store their Barbie and all her clothes and accessories. And don't leave out the little guys. Here's a Spider-Man that fits inside this one. And it's a nice way for them to be able to take it with them um, when, they, when they travel or just to play around the house and keep things organized and off the floor. This is another fun one that I think uh, quilters will enjoy. Well, this one is a good one for artists. If you've got budding artists in your family, here's a way they can put their colored pencils or markers or all those things. If you do bullet journaling, a great way to keep all your journaling supplies. And boy, what a perfect time for keeping a journal with everything that's happening in our world today. I'm kind of sorry that I didn't start a journal right at the beginning of all this because there have been so many changes already just in the past month. It would be nice to have, you know, a, a record of all the things and all the feelings that we've all felt. But that's for the journaling. And then, of course, I think a lot of us will appreciate this one, a great way to store your bottle of wine. So you can put a bottle of wine in there just to keep handy when you're sewing or a great way to transport a bottle of wine to and from a friend's house. If you want to make a hostess gift, it's a great way to take the bottle of wine when you go there. So you can probably even stick the, the bottle opener in here and, and be ready to go. So that pattern again is called flipping out, two sizes, fun and easy to make. And those are really quick to do. Another pattern that is one of my favorites and this is one that we made with the Case Facet Collective. I absolutely love this black and white dot. It just makes such a classy bag, I think. And so this is a pattern called Glow and Go. I designed this um, based on my daughter-in-law's design. She actually designed it. She wanted something that she could carry her makeup in when she travels. So it opens up and we've got mesh pockets inside that you can put makeup, toiletries, brushes, all those things in. We um, have a product called Slicker that is an iron-on laminate that you can turn any fabric into a laminated fabric. So we just took Cave Spun Stripe, um, put that on, ironed it on, and we've got a nice white clean interior for this. And then we added a vinyl overlay so that nothing's um, touching each other. And when that's ready to go, you just close it up and it and you can close it with this little strap and you, you're ready to go. On the little um, bag that goes with it, again, we put the slicker on the inside, but it's perfect for carrying your bigger things that are in bottles, razors, things like that are, that are too big to go in the other one. This is a really fun bag to make because it's just one piece of fabric and one side of a piece of zipper tape that wraps around and you put it on. So out of a quarter of a yard of main fabric and a quarter yard of lining fabric and one 30 inch zipper, you get two bags. So 
So it's a really fun one to make for gifts and a great way to use some of those favorite fabrics that you've been hoarding. Very fun way to showcase uh, capes or tulas or any of those beautiful fabrics. So that one again is called Glow and Go. Hey, Annie, a, yes. Could I just jump in for a second? Please. All of those bags are awesome. I just, I, I, this is very, very exciting. I love all of the ways that you have shown us to use the bags. I just wanted to welcome our viewers. We have a lot of viewers coming in. We're, we're pushing the thousand mark. And uh, so we're pretty excited about that. I just wanted to invite every, you know, say hello to everybody, let you know that we are doing a new program here at Free Spirit. It's called Inspired By and Annie Unrain from Buy Annie Patterns or, or buyannie.com is hosting today. And she has been showing us uh, many bags that she and her team have made using Free Spirit Fabrics. So thank you for tuning in. We are really happy that you're here. I see there's people from all over the place. I saw there were some people from Canada, Utah, Texas, Ohio. I know that there's some questions about elastic. I think that um, Annie will probably answer a couple of those uh, highlight those uh, questions as well in this or in future. And if everyone out there wants to send us some thumbs up and hearts, we would really love that. So we know everyone's still tuning in and uh, this is great. So back to Annie. Thanks so much. I'm so excited to hear that so many people are joining us. That makes it really fun. Isn't it fantastic that we can all get together this way even though we're all stay stuck at home? This is another really fun pattern that we designed. It's called Meshing Around. And we've made this using Tula Pink's uh, new True Colors line. She's got some fabulous fabrics in that. One of my very favorites is this hexagon with the, the rainbow colors that go all the way across. And it is such a fun way to combine her fabrics with our mesh and our fold over elastic. We love being able to mix and match and get all kinds of assortments. Next week, we're in our segment, we're going to talk about how we choose fabrics for our projects and how we coordinate mesh and fold over and zippers to go with those. So make sure you come join us next week. Someone, she said, had a question about fold over elastic. This is an elastic that has a fold woven right down the middle and you can use it either on the shiny side or on the other side, it's matte. And basically, you just open it, you lay your mesh along the fold, fold the mesh over, and stitch along the edge. So what makes it so fabulous is it's one step to bind an edge, and then the pocket will have a little bit of added stretch to uh, go along with the stretch that the mesh has. So it's really fun. We have fold over and mesh in 14 different colors. So it's always really fun to be able to find something that matches the project. This is the large size. And the fun thing about these is that you pull on the side straps to um, close the bag. And then you can wear it on your back. And I'm not going to put it on. But you can wear it as a backpack or just sling it over your shoulder and carry it either way. We made the small one using um, Tula's fabric and showed it as maybe a way to take it to the grocery store to carry your produce in or the farmer's market. So again, that pattern is called meshing around and three sizes in that one. Fun for kids, perfect. If we ever get out of the house to go to the pool, you can throw your swimming suit, anything damp in there, the mesh is breathable and nothing's gonna get stinky and moldy in there. So that's a really fun one called meshing around. One more little quick gift that I want to show. This one is made with Valerie Wells' new line called Kismet. This is such a, such a fun line. It's got elephants, which you don't see on these fabrics until you look on the inside. We use the elephant fabric for the lining on here. Because this pattern is designed so that it's one solid piece of fabric, the elephants on the outside would have been upside down. We didn't mind them upside down on the inside, so um, we made that the lining side on this bag. But this is a fun project to do great for beginning sewists. Um, you know, if you want to teach your grandkids how to sew, um, once everything's cut out, out on this, they take about 20 minutes to make, so they're quick and easy to do. This is kind of my go-to gift. If I'm looking for gifts for staff or neighbors or teachers, I can fill it with, you know, things that are appropriate to the recipient. 
but just a fun, easy thing to make. And it's great for putting pencils in, pens in, chargers, just all kinds of things can go in there. And again, the pattern includes two sizes. One 30 inch zipper makes both the small and the large. And in a couple weeks, our um, focus is going to be on zippers and I'm going to show you how you can make zippers of any length or style. So make sure you come back and join us in a couple weeks for that segment. Next, I wanna talk about ways to organize your um, sewing room and your supplies. I know that um, a lot of us have been busy sewing, but a lot of us have also been busy organizing. And I know for me, if I'm stressed, the best thing I can do is start cleaning. So I always tell my kids, if you see me cleaning, you know that something's stressing me because I don't usually worry about it or I'm procrastinating. If I have a deadline due, the, the best thing I can do is go clean my house because it helps me focus and, and get back to it. I, I work much better if things are clean and organized around me, which you may not know if you ever visited my studio because usually it's a mess. But um, so what I wanted to do is also show you some things that you can make to help organize maybe your sewing projects or any variety of things. So this is a pattern called pocket packers. And we've got a set, no, project bags, excuse me, wrong name. Right there on the tag it says. You'd think I could read. Okay, so this is two different versions of the pattern. This is one made with, again, Tula Pink Fantastic Homemade Fabric. And you kind of have to see each bag individually to get the full effect of them. But there's a small one, which is perfect for rotary cutters, scissors, small tools like that. Each one of them has a handle, so it's easy to carry or easy to hang up on a hook. Um, they start with a quilted background, and then on front is a vinyl window and a zipper. On the small, we didn't bother with the border because it's too little, but on the, the, the I think that one's called extra small. On the other three sizes, there are, um, there are borders on those. So fun ways to bring in some of the other fabrics, I love the way you can see this wonderful print on the inside with the scissors and the spools and things. And then this one has the tape measures on it. And again, a variety of pieced fabrics at the bottom. And then we showcase the sewing machines on the large one. So this is a 16 inch uh, 16 and a half inch square bag. We have a block of the month pattern that we did several years ago that had 16 inch blocks and there was nothing out there that you could store a 16 inch block in. So that was the impetus for this pattern. This one will, sh will hold 12 inch blocks or you, know, you can put your fabric and pattern pieces and project pieces in there. So these are really fun to do. We're getting ready to do a, introduce an updated version of that pattern and it's going to include the option of a solid fabric border. So this again is Valerie Wells' fun Kismet fabric. We kind of showcased the elephants underneath the windows there. And then on these three, we took one fabric and we just alternated. So here we showed the flowers, which the elephants are the lining of, and then we just flipped the fabric over. So the lining side was up here, the flowers on the back and alternated that through. This one has a really gorgeous blue um, print on the back, which I love too. So that was a really fun set to make. But those are just fabulous for sewing supplies. These are great for kids' toys. If you have kids who have puzzles with lots of pieces, a great way to keep those all together in one place and just so many ways that you can use these. Another one of my very, very favorite patterns is this one. And this of all the things that I've made to corral supplies is probably my favorite. This is a pattern called Running With Scissors. It was um, inspired by Tula Pink. Tula came to me at market a couple years ago and said, I really need a bag that I can put all my hardware in because I have all these scissors and things and I need something that will, that will hold them would you be interested in designing a pattern? And of course, I'm not gonna say no to Tula, but it stressed me tremendously. So I went home and I, she gave me one of all the tools so that I could figure it out. And I spent a lot of time trying to decide what to make. And this is what I ended up with. There's a much longer story to it, but um, short story is we came up with this for several reasons. First of all, I wanted it to be nice and compact so that when you're ready to travel, 
it's not a great big bag. So this zips shut on the side and everything is nice and secure inside and it doesn't take up very much room. Everything that I need when I travel to um, teach classes is in here and it's easy to carry. But I knew that all of these tools were going to be ones that you needed to have access to while you're in class. And so if I put them in a bag that you had to open, you wouldn't have room. They needed to be easy to access. So we decided on this design with pockets on each side of the bag so that the tools would be easy to access. And then when we got done with the whole pattern, we realized that because these tools are so heavy, we couldn't keep it standing up. And we spent probably a week, all of us brainstorming ideas to try and make this stand up. And finally someone said, well, you know what it needs is it needs an A-frame under it. Do you have a pattern that looks like an A-frame? And we realized that our open wide pattern was kind of shaped like that. So we got one, tried it, and then we designed this pattern as, um, as a companion to this. So this pattern is called Take a Stand. And it's just a zippered bag that opens up. I've got my water bottles in there, but mesh pockets on the inside, pockets front and back um, to store whatever you want. It's got a carrying strap that you can carry on it. But what makes it nice is I can take this bag and put it on top and it doesn't fall over. So Tula said that when she uses it, she has a lazy Susan. She just puts that on there and then just rotates it as she needs to access her tools while she's sewing. My um, helper who tech edits my pattern, her name's Leslie, Lelly Bunny on Instagram, if you follow her. She thinks of everything that I don't think of. And she said, what I'm worried about is people um, closing this and having these scissors bang against each other. You don't want to mess up those beautiful finishes. So we added another little piece that goes on the inside. Again, we used Tula's fun tool fabric and our hands fabric on that. And that just fits inside so that when you zip it up, you've got a little padding to protect your tools. It also works great as a pin cushion or a little pressing mat. Lots of ways you can use that. When I got done with this, originally I had planned to make that one pattern. It was 28 pages long and we couldn't even fit it in the bag. So we decided it needed to be two separate patterns. And so many people had asked about whether or not this fits inside there. And I said no, because I wanted it so that this rested on the floor, not on the bag, so it didn't um, break it down. But that we did put in a larger size um, Glow's going to grab that for me so I can show that to you. And we designed it so that this bag does fit in the larger size if you want. So here's the larger size. This is a perfect one to showcase Tula's um, sewing machines. We fussy cut those so they're centered on the front. We used the tools in the back. We love um, playing with Tula's fabric and mixing and matching things so that you've got different fabrics all over the place. We call that Tula-izing a bag because we've kind of learned that from Tula. She does such a great job of doing that. But if you want them to carry this inside the bag, it fits inside. This bag also works good for a sewing machine. You can fit a small sewing machine in, in here if you want. The only thing that I would change if you decide to do that is that right now the strap, strap is designed so that there's one strap. If you're going to carry something that heavy, I would make it so that you have these tabs on each side on front and back, and then it would carry it a little bit more um, securely and more evenly. But that pattern is called Take a Stand. This one is running with scissors and is just a fabulous one for um, organizing your tools. What is next on our list? Hey, oh, Annie, okay. could I jump in? Yes, please. Thank you for showing us all those wonderful bags. I love how the homemade, especially as a quilter, it's just fantastic to see, you know, all those fabrics showcase so beautifully because, you know, when you go around and you, I know that myself, when I have a bag like that, that is utilizing my tools, that it, it's just fantastic to have the sewing notions and tool is scissors and those tapes and the pins and all of that that are just totally, what a sewer or a quilter or anybody, you know, would really love, you know, to see on a bag. And I think that your, your designs for these are really great. And I love all the tips for how you're showing 
to put it like on a lazy Susan, I mean, that's genius, you know, because I, you know, I have like a little spinner on my sewing table, but I wouldn't have thought of popping all that on a lazy Susan. Um, and I also love those bags that you had shown um, to put the, the quilt blocks into. What did you say the name of that pattern was? Those are called project bags. Project bags, yeah, that's awesome. Because when you're working on a project, just to be able to put, you know, like you said, whether it be your six inch squares or your 10, 12, 16 inch squares, or just, you know, keep your project together and they zip right up and you can see through the window. So that's like fantastic. I totally, you're gonna get me making bags. So I just great. wanna, yeah, no, I, I definitely need to, you've inspired me. So I just wanna welcome everybody that's still on our Facebook uh, live feed here. This is our Inspired By um, series that we've started for the first time this week and by Annie. Um, dot com is here, Annie Unrain, and she is showing us all of the bags that she's been inspired to make using free spirit fabrics. So, um, so far we've gone through a number of bags and Annie, at the end of this or at a later point, would you be able to um, pop something up uh, so that we could at least list the bags that we show today on this? Because we, we're getting some questions on what was that bag? So. I mean, people could go back and look at the video again, but if we could um, maybe have a something that we could get hand out or show on our website, you know, so that people would know what we're doing, is that possible? Absolutely. Yes, we okay. can definitely do that. I think we might be able to do that through our Airtable where we can show pictures and all the information about them. I'll have to talk to Casey okay. about how to do that. If nothing else, we'll at least get a Excel spreadsheet or something list. But I right. think we can do better than that. Okay, no, that's awesome because we're getting a lot of questions and it looks like your team as well as the Free Spirit team are answering a lot of questions. So that's great. And we still have people popping in from all over. So thank you everybody. We're really happy that you're here. And I'm gonna let Annie continue. I don't wanna take away your thunder, but I just wanted to um, welcome everybody. And there's still lots of hearts and lots of thumbs up coming at us. So we're gonna just continue on. That's fabulous. Thank you so much, Sharon. And yes, we will work uh, to get those lists and pictures up so you can know what patterns they are. This, when people ask me, what is your favorite pattern? I always say, well, that's kind of like asking a mother who her favorite child is. But if I had to pick one, I would have to say that between these two, these are probably my favorite things, not only to have and use, but also to make as gifts. This is the pattern that I designed several years ago called Catch All Caddy. And as you can see, it catches everything that I need to store. So this, I make one of these by to have on every cutting table that I have. So I have one at home, I have one at the office. We're setting up a new video studio. We'll, we'll have one here. And this is just the perfect thing to organize all of my tools that I use. The thing that I do is I make sure that each of them is organized with the same tools in the same places because if I know that right here is where I keep my chalk markers and my markers, right here is where I put my um, hemostats, over here is, actually I don't know what I put in this one usually, in the back is where I put my big scissors usually and then everything else goes inside. The wonderful thing about these is that they, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this, but they do not have pockets on the inside. Rather than pockets, these are what we call bellowed dividers. And if you look right here, you're going to see that if I take everything out of there, those are set so that they're, they're kind of like the bellows on a pair of cargo pants, but they've got little pleats kind of folded in each side so that when there's nothing in that, it folds back against the side flat. But when you're ready to put something in there, it expands and holds a ton of stuff. So if I have small things like this where I've got my chalk or my glue stick and all my um, turning tools and my pencils and things, I just put a plastic cup in there to hold those and keep them from falling down. But you can see it holds them nice and secure. We um, put a bigger one over here for all our circle rulers that we use when we're shaping our projects. And then I usually keep my I usually actually keep my little hammer and this one and my rotary cutters separated by size in there. The other nice thing, which is probably why that hammer wasn't there, is because these expand, if you want to take a bottle of water, 
you it expands far enough to put that in and you're not going to worry about it falling over and spilling on everything that's in there so it's got pockets all the way around the outside uh, a zippered pocket on one end so if you're carrying this you know like maybe to a class and you want to stick your credit card or some money in there you've got a nice secure place for that it's got padded handles that fall flat against out of the way but when you want to carry it they're easy to carry and one question I'm often asked is what is the purpose of these the purpose of these started as I don't like to try to turn binding over and make it look good on this end and to do that four times was just more than I could bear. So if I took my binding and just continued it across the top and reconnected over here, I never had to worry about turning those ends under. So that was why I did it to start with. But I found that I actually really liked using these as a way to grab my caddy and move it back and forth on my table. It also makes a perfect place to hold wonder clips. I'll usually put a little ring on there with my zipper pulls and you know my basting tape, my uh, tape to mark on my ruler. So it has a lot of purpose there too. So this one is called Catch All Caddy and for a long time that was my favorite. This makes a fabulous baby shower gift. Um, Mom and dad can put diapers, ointments, creams, clothes, all those things in there and carry it from room to room to the changing station. Um, but that's a really great one. The other, um, one though that we decided to do so i often make this for shower gifts but what i found is that this was a little bit too big to put next to my sewing table and again my friend leslie who's um, my tech editor she said she works in a sewing room that's 50 square feet and so she said i don't have room for one that size could we do a smaller one so this became um, the little sister to catch all caddy and this pattern is called in control so as you can see, I've kind of got it also with sewing supplies because it's the one that I put next to my sewing machine. But this is an ideal little caddy to put on the coffee table. You can put remote controls in here, books, um, anything that you want to have handy, but all in one place so that you don't have it spread all over the living room. And depending on the fabric, you can make this so many fun ways. Again, this is made with case, uh, the Case Facet Collective fabrics. We used a real pretty um, floral on the inside, and I love these, I'm not sure what they are, oranges that are purple, lemons on the outside, and then of course that great black and white polka dot for the binding. This is one of my very favorites. So that is called In Control. Next, um, we're going to kind of move into a little bit of our home deck uh, things. Once you've got everything organized in the house, then you can start thinking about redecorating. You know, we've got all this time at home, we may as well make it a fun place to be. So this is a pattern that we designed last year uh, called In Control. I'm gonna put both of these on here. So this comes in three sizes. I believe this is, what did I call it? In control. In control. In control is what I just showed you. This one is called Undercover. Thanks to my helpers for getting me right. So this comes in three sizes with, I think this is the small, this is the medium, and this is the large. And I'm just gonna get this small one out of the, actually maybe I'll just get the large one and lay it down and show you this. So each one of these is designed to fit over your sewing machine. And it's got a zippered pocket on the front, which is the perfect place to put the manual. On the back is a slip pocket that you can either make accessible from the top or from the side. And that's a perfect place to put your extension table that comes with your machine. And then on each end are pockets. So on this end is a mesh pocket that is perfect for putting the foot pedal and the cords in. On this end, a zippered pocket for, you know, all the little attachments and things that you want to keep safe and secure. And then it's designed so that you can put it over the machine. And there are flaps that close with magnets on the top so you can reach in and grab the handle and move it um, from place to place as you need to. But again, this is the perfect project to make with Tula's homemade fabric. We added some of the Renaissance ribbons on here. Again, we mixed and matched fabrics. On here, we did her um, true colors for the uh, stripe and the border and the bindings. We love using uh, striped fabrics for bindings. And in the last um, video in this series, we're going to talk about making your own custom bindings 
using fabric that matches your project. And I've got some really great tips to share on how to um, use stripes for that and make it that you can't tell where you started and stopped joining the pieces. So make sure you come back and join us for that. But again, that one's called Undercover. It's three sizes. So the small is designed to fit the three series machines. The medium is of Bernina's, sorry, so Tula's machines. The medium is to, sit, to fit the five series machines and the large fits the seven series. If you aren't fortunate enough to sew on a Bernina, we took these around when we were working on the pattern to all the local uh, machine dealers in town and we tried them on Fofs, Janome's, Brothers, Juki's, everything under the sun. And for the most part, they fit with maybe some minor modifications. In the pattern and also in the add-on video that goes with the pattern, we tell you how to measure your machine, how to figure out which one is closest to what you need, and then what adjustments you might need to make to have it fit your machine. So these are really, really fun, fun to make. And again, that's called undercover. Hey, Annie, I have a yes. quick question for you. Uh-huh. By any chance, do you know if this small version of Undercover, will that uh, fit over a featherweight? It's a little bit big for a featherweight. It's too wide and tall, but not deep enough. A featherweight is, um, we, we will probably do a, a pattern just for that, or you can modify this one to fit. But also on a featherweight, you actually reach down and grab the whole top of the machine for the, to move it. Um, right. So, so you'd need to modify the small. It's a little bit too big. If, but the, I don't know if you noticed, but you can see how they stand up by themselves without right. even anything in there. So if you just want it to use it as something to put over your machine, it certainly would work. It's, I, right. I'm quite sure that it's big enough that it I was will just cover trying to it. get it. I was just trying to get an idea of. Um sizing visually for the small you know what yeah. i mean in terms of so how the small, small is machine small. is you know like it's the the featherweight is deeper this way and shorter as i right. recall okay great thank everyone's you. loving those uh machine covers as well so Aren't get a lot fun? of thumbs so up on those yeah. too much fabric for that is just I mean, you couldn't have picked a better better fabric to use for that. I really love this one in the blues with that. I don't remember what this pattern is it's called. called. I think it's called seed, seeds. Seeds, yeah. That, that is probably my favorite of the solids that go with that. It's just so perfect. And those sewing machines are just to die for with the foot pedal and the cord going around. Yeah, I so think perfect. that Tula, if I'm not mistaken, I think that Tula designed that fabric I, again, I hope I'm calling it correct, the seeds fabric, um, because it kind of looks like, you know, when you're sewing and you have all those little bits of fabric around and, yeah. you know, they're that all over your sense. shirt <laughs> <laughs> and wherever else they are along the way in your chair. So th those are awesome bags. Nice job. Thank you. Or covers, yeah. covers. Covers. We, we always call that quilters doo-doo. So yes. yeah, all the little bits of thread that are all over you as you go. All right, yes. this is a fun, another set that you can make um, for home decor. And this is made using Tim Holtz's fabric. This pattern is called Hang In There. And it's designed to either go on the side of the bed or on the arm of the sofa to hold your remote controls, your magazine, your book, your hand cream, all of those things. Get all the clutter off the nightstand and together in one place. So it's got soft and stable that makes this part really sturdy. And then this part is designed to go either under the mattress or if you're making it for a chair, you know, over the arm and maybe under the cushions. If you are, they're, they're measured to fit mattresses. If you're going to put it on the arm of a chair, you want to do some measurements so that you're sure that this piece is long enough to go under something to hold it in place. But these have pockets on the front. Again, we did a little mesh pocket so that you can put things in there and have good visibility for them. These are designed so that you can put your cord for your charger through there and not be, you know, reaching around on the floor trying to fall it when it or find it when it falls out. It's also a perfect place to put your glasses. You can just, you know, hook them on the side there and always know where your reading glasses are. My glasses have to be on my head all the time, but actually, I should remember that 
and make one of these to go because I spend so much time looking for my glasses in the morning. I never can find where I left them the night before. So, um, <laughs> so this one is the small, and then there's a larger size too that's perfect to put on the bed. I've had so many people say, oh man, I am making that for my husband because he always loses the remote control. So that's a really fun one. And we love these fabrics that um, Tim Holtz did. There's just so many fun, fun designs in here and fun ways to, I think this would go so well in a modern house or a more traditional house, either one. It's just, it's a great fabric. Do we have the nesting baskets? Yeah. This is another set um, that we made using uh, Tim's fabric. And these are baskets that you can use. They've got little labels on them. So you can label them with what's inside, but they ha they're made out of soft and stable. So they stand up really well and there's three sizes. So that's the large one. Here's the medium one. And then here's the small one. And you can put your things in them, put them on a shelf, stack them up and have everything organized. Great way to store fabric, um, sewing supplies. I actually put fat quarters in the large one and you can fit 20 yards of fabric folded into fat quarters in one of these. It's amazing how much they hold. And wow. once you have it all full, then it's really sturdy and you can put you know other stuff on top. So what I do is I put fab fat quarters in here, I throw my zippers, uh, stash in here and then hardware and things in here. So it's a great way to keep all of that organized and accessible, but it looks so much prettier than just masses of those, you know, sitting on the floor somewhere. So that pattern is called nesting baskets and again includes three sizes. It's also fun to make these um, alternating, maybe one fabric here and a different fabric for the lid and you know, either do the lid all the same or do all different fabrics. There's so many ways that you can customize these and great for kids' rooms. Um, you know, you could put, I had one gal who made these for her granddaughters and she labeled them for underwear, socks, um, I forget what, what ha hair bands, I think, or hair accessories were in one of them. So lots of fun ways to use those and make those for gifts. Annie, when you pulled those out, um, I was what I immediately thought of were like the old uh, hat boxes. Yes, exactly. A long time ago, I had made hat boxes. So instead, you know, those are really, uh, I guess, fabric hat boxes. So right. that's great. Now, a uh, quick question for you. Could any of those nesting baskets be made with fat quarters? I know you said that they store fat quarters, but could they be made with them? I'm trying to remember how much fabric you need. Can they may be made with fat quarters? I think they all need more than that, even the small one, because the way they're made, you take one piece of fabric and you attach it to a piece of soft and stable, and then you join it on these ends and fold it over so that you've got a double layer of soft and stable that makes your outside fabric and your lining fabric, and then you've made a circle for the base and you just sew that. So they're quick and easy to do. You need a quarter of a yard for the small one, but probably not a fat quarter. Because right. it needs to be wider. And then yeah, five the length. for the medium and three quarters for the large glow set. Okay, thank you. I yeah, didn't mean to put could, you on the spot like no, that. No, <laughs> that's all right. You could probably, if you had fat quarters, you could probably you know, seam them and do something interesting with that too. There's so many ways that you can customize these to do fun things. Right, that's awesome, thank you. All right, moving on. These, were, these are, I know that, okay, we've got our gifts made. We've got everything cleaned and organized. All the closets are clean. Um, we've got the house decorated and now we just wanna get the heck out and we wanna go somewhere. So um, kind of the end of this, we want to show you some ideas for travel bags or things that you can do when you're out running around town, because eventually we're going to get to do that again. This is probably my favorite bag of all time um, for carrying around town. This one is called Bowl Me Over, and we, this is a new version of Bowl Me Over. This is Bowl Me Over 2.0. We added the option of having a strap so you could wear it cross body. But when we do the crossbody strap on it, we put short little handles here so you can just grab it. But the pattern also includes the option to omit the crossbody strap and have longer handles 
in two different lengths, which of course you can customize so that you can wear it over your shoulder. But what I love about this bag are several things. First of all, it has a lot of pockets. On the outside, there's a pocket that closes with a little magnetic snap, which I love that sound. I just think that's awesome. And this is where I throw my keys and my phone when I'm ready to go somewhere, so it's always easy to grab. On the back is a zippered pocket that goes all the way across the side. And then when you open it, we've got a full mesh pocket on one side and a zippered or a slip pocket on this side, which has is made out of fabric, but it uses fold over elastic on the top to um, gather it and make it so that it expands to hold bigger things. So this one is called Bowl Me Over 2.0. And you can see we used a variety of tape fabrics. We used that beautiful floral for the outside and this fun polka dot, which goes so well with our redwood zippers for the bindings. And then on the inside, we've got the purple fruit. And then we brought that stripe in for our pocket and our little stabilizer sleeve. We put a little stabilizer in the bottom of our bigger bags, partly to hold it open at the bottom and also just to give you a stiff space so that when you carry things in there, it's not getting droopy down at the bottom. So this is called Bow Me Over, and we have another bag that is probably one of our best selling patterns, one of our all time favorites. And this is the big sister to Bow Me Over. This one is called the Ultimate Travel Bag. And I know lots and lots of people have made this bag and loved it. It is one that is great even for beginners. I always tell people don't be afraid to try this because there's really nothing hard about it. And one thing is sometimes bigger is better than smaller because you've got more room to work. So um, we'll talk in some of the other segments about kind of how these bags come together, but it's basically you make a front, a back, you attach pockets to it, you attach a zipper between a couple strips, and then you sew those together. So easy to do. This again is made with capes fabric. Boy, we, we really fell in love with that black and white polka dot. We used it on a lot of things here. And on the inside of this, we've got fun um, circles, again, that stripe, and again, a mesh pocket. So you're going to see a lot of similarities to the um, bowl me over in the styles of pockets. On the out end of this, because it's a little wider, we added some pockets. And this is a new version of this pattern that's coming up that has you put these pockets on so they're big enough to hold a bottle of water. And also on the back, we have added a trolley sleeve so that when you're going through the airport, you can hook this over the handles on your rolling luggage and it makes it a lot easier to carry. This one has the handles and then it also has a crossbody strap that has a nice padded shoulder strap so it makes it really easy to carry. So that one is called the ultimate travel bag and next week we're going to show this bag made in a variety of different fabrics as we talk about choosing colors of fabric for zippers and mesh and fold over and all those fun things to coordinate with your beautiful fabrics. All right. The last thing that I want to show you is a set of projects that we designed to um, teach people kind of the basic skills that they need to make biani projects. And so we've got four different projects. And let me look here. I wanted to bring these out too, because these are really fun to do. So, the, so these are what we are kind of have put together as a series that we call biani basics. There's four different patterns. These are available as free downloads on our website. So if our patterns are new to you, if you've never made a Biani pattern before, this is the perfect place to start because they go through the basics and they're quick, simple, easy projects that you can do in the afternoon. And you learn all the skills that you need to do a bigger project, but you've got it done in an afternoon. And they don't take up very much fabric, so you can probably use things that you've got on hand. So the first one is called Petty Four Baskets, and this uses just two 10 inch squares of fabric and a 10 by 11 in inch piece of soft and stable, but you sew it together to make these cute little baskets. They're great for holding fat quarters, hold your thread. I like to use one for all my wonder clips. Just a great little way to organize things and 
great for gifts. These take no time at all to put together and are just really fun to do. So that pattern is called Petty Four Baskets and included with it is a video that walks you step by step through the next project or through the whole project. The next one that I would recommend doing is this one and this one is called Peacekeeper. And this is similar to our project bags but just one size. But in this you learn to work with mesh, how to install a zipper in a mesh pocket, how to make a simple handle using interfacing, how to attach a border and how to make your own bias binding and bind the edges on a piece that has rounded corners. Oh, you also learn to quilt your fabric with soft and stable. So lots of techniques. This video has lots of basic information. If you've not done rotary cutting before, if that's new to you, this is a perfect way to start. And if any of you that are listening today are shop owners, these are awesome projects to share with your beginning sewers. Even your more advanced sewers are going to love these as a way to teach them some of our basic techniques. Um, we sell the patterns to shop owners in packs of 25 that are already printed and they're in full color. So they're really easy for you to make kits. During this coronavirus pandemic, I've seen so many stores who are putting together different projects made with these and offering them to people to work on while they're at home. So it's a great way to put together a quick and easy kit. This one you need three fat quarters of fabric. This one uses 10 inch layer cake squares. So, you know, fun ways to put those together. One 30 inch or 124 inch zipper on that. So after you've made that, then I recommend that you work on this one. This is a pattern called uh, Call Me. And we designed this to wear when we go to shows, which right now we're not doing but it's perfect if you want to carry your phone around the house and you know don't have a pocket big enough for it because on the back is a mesh pocket that's perfect for inserting your phone. Um, on the front, we have a clear vinyl pocket where we can put our name tag when we go to the show and a zippered pocket down at the bottom to put your credit card in because really what do you need besides your credit card, your ID, and your phone when you're at a show? The handle is made out of the binding and it can be made long so you can wear it crossbody or you can make it shorter if you just want to wear it around your neck. So in this pattern, you learn to work with vinyl, you learn to install a zipper in a quilted fabric pocket, you learn to use fold over elastic to bind a mesh pocket, and you learn to again attach the binding and use it also to make a strap. So that's the third one called Call Me. Then the last project that I would recommend that you do is this one. This one is called Easy Does It. We made this out of Tula's uh, True Colors. We picked uh, one of the orange marbly ones and then the orange and purple hexagon and then the fairy dust on the inside. So the, the reason we designed this bag, actually there's two. So first of all, we wanted to teach you how to make a three-dimensional bag and how to bind edges on something like that. But more importantly, we wanted to show you how to do this binding. And we're going to talk about this in our last segment on binding. But when you join this strip that your zippers are sewn to to the side strip, if you don't do this right, if you do it the way you did this binding, you're going to end up with a big lumpy binding there. And so we want, you have to do it a little bit different way to make it lie flat like that. And this is a technique that's used on basically any of our travel bags. So our Bowl Me Over has that seam. Our, our Ultimate Travel has that seam. Our Round Trip Duffel, any of those are going to have that seam. And so if you can learn to do that, in a little simple project like this, then when you're ready to do the bigger project, you're not gonna, going to be afraid and you're going to know right what to do. What happens often is if I'm teaching a class, say for ultimate travel bag, because it takes so long to get the straps made and the pockets made and all the components made, people don't get to the step of putting the bag together in class. So with this project, because it's a sh little short project, they get to that much earlier and they're going to learn to do that. So this one is called Easy Does It and is just a perfect little project for that. So for all of you who joined us today, thank you so much for joining us. Um, as a little thank you, we uh, put together some giveaways and we've got three people that are gonna win today. And what we're going to do is we've got a kit, Free Spirit is providing fabric and we're providing soft and stable mesh, fold over, whatever you need to make 
One's going to win everything to make easy does it. One's going to win what they need to make a call me. And one's going to win what they need to make a peacekeeper. So Sharon, do you want to tell them a little bit more about the giveaway and how they can enter to win that? Absolutely. Thank you, Annie. This has been wonderful. You've totally inspired me, like I mentioned before. So this is great. I love all of uh, your bags are awesome. Um, I love how hearing about how you design them and the different ways that, you know, like you got around that binding, but yet it came into, you know, a great use pulling the bag and the uh, totes there that you, they're showing in the case. Sorry, I'm forgetting the names of all your bags. That's all right. <laughs> They're all so wonderful and I uh, love the use of, you know, the free spirit fabrics. You did a great job with the cape, the Tula, uh, the Tim Holtz and the Kismet. I mean, we love it. Uh, they're really, really beautiful. So what I wanna thank you for um, offering these gifts. So like Annie said, we have the Peacekeeper, the Call Me and the Easy Does It. And uh, Annie's gonna supply uh, whatever you need to make those bags and Free Spirit will be offering them. Uh, the Peacekeeper will come in new vintage fabric with Kathy Doughty and that ships in April. Uh, the Call Me bag will come, uh, we'll, we'll be sending fabric in a collection called Calico Horses by Lorraine Turner. She's a new designer for Free Spirit and that ships in May. And then the Easy Does It, we will be sending fabric with that one in hindsight by Anna Maria, and that ships in this month, April. So we are going to pick winners. We would like to hear from you of who is your favorite designer from Free Spirit. And we will announce the winners next week. So uh, please put up whoever your free design, uh, your favorite Free Spirit designer is. And uh, Lindsay will be making the choice on who the winner is. And there'll be a random winner because it's so, you know, there'll be so many people. Um, but next week we'll announce it. And uh, so please turn in next week, tune in next week. Again, this is the, the first episode or first in a series of uh, Inspired By. And this week it is by Annie.com. And Annie Unrain was our guest today. Thank you so much, Annie. Um, next week, Annie is going, so on April 30th, we, we will be back. So next Thursday at three o'clock, we will be back again with Annie and she's going to be co covering colorful coordinates. Uh, the week after that, she will be doing zippers are easy. The week after that, we're gonna do carry on, which are handles and straps for your bags if you're looking for any tips or techniques. And then the last week she'll be doing beautiful bindings as Annie already mentioned. And all of these are great. I mean, any seamstress knows that as seasoned as you think you are making something or as new as you are, there's always a new technique to learn. I mean, I know that whenever I watch anybody, you know, I, I think, you know, I'm all smitten. Oh, I totally know how to do that. And then you watch something, you're like, oh, that's awesome. I would have never thought to do that. So there's always something to be learned. And Annie, your bags are wonderful. So thank you so much for sharing them with us. Um, and I think that was all I wanted to say today. Um, Annie, is there anything else you'd like to say or are you? Thank you so much for inviting me. Thank you all for joining us. It was really fun to spend part of my afternoon with you and I can't wait to see you next week. So join us again. Thank yes, you. Yes, th thank you, Annie. It was wonderful. We had a lot, a lot, a lot of hearts, a lot, a lot of likes, a lot of comments and we will save this and we will be posting it on our page. It's live on our page now, but it'll be up for people to view afterwards as well. So thank you so much. And we look forward to seeing you next week for picking out the colorful coordinates and fabrics and zippers and all the other products that you need to make Annie's bags. So thank you everybody for joining us uh, again. Uh, I'm Sharon and this is the Inspired By series. And uh, please tune in next week. We would love to have you while we're all um, in our quarantine and hopefully we'll be getting out soon and we'll be using those travel bags, Annie. That's great. <laughs> we'll all be going places. <laughs> That's right. Get prepared because you're gonna you're gonna be ready to use them soon. Exactly. Thanks so much. We're gonna make our time useful. All right. Thanks, Annie. Have a great day. And thank you everybody for tuning in. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.